All right, new day, new laptop to repair. And this time we have an Alienware X17R1. This is a 17 inch laptop. This is one of Dell's most powerful laptops for the recent models. This is an interesting one. This one got sent in because the keyboard doesn't work. But here's the thing about this. The keyboard actually works just fine. Uh, but the customer says it doesn't work when they're in Windows. But I've seen this many times before at this point. There's a big issue with gaming laptops in general. It's not just Dell, Asus, MSI, and Acer. They all have the same issue, even HPs. Whenever you have an RGB keyboard like this, it interfaces with the computer as a USB device. And so it's not just a simple matrix keyboard. And so what's actually happening is when you're outside of Windows, it's able to communicate with the laptop in kind of more of a simple manner. But whenever it boots to Windows, it's trying to interface with Windows as a uh, USB device, and so it's throwing an error. And I know exactly why it's throwing the error now because I've, I've worked on these and I'm able to fix this. That's assuming that this is the same issue that we've had before that I've seen in the past. So again, right now it works fine. Oh, look, it stopped working. So I spoke too soon. So maybe this is a totally different issue. So it doesn't work any, anymore. I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on. Let's try it again. Okay, yeah, so the keyboard's not working at all. So this is most likely the issue that I've seen in the past, um, and it's all related to this being a USB keyboard. Let's plug a USB keyboard into the side and actually see if it works. All right, here we go. So we have a USB keyboard. All right, so there you go. So the, the USB keyboard's actually working just fine. But this keyboard is not working at all and it's all because this actually interfaces with the computer as a USB keyboard. What's actually happening here is it's only doing this on these high-end gaming machines. They all have these, these fancy RGB backlit keyboards and the way that they can run all the different colors and the keys and uh, things like that is through a USB interface. And so the interface is, is this, there's this one little chip um, that is actually failing on these and it's not a manufacturer of the laptops issue It's actually the manufacturer who made these chips that made a faulty batch of these or something like that So let me log in the windows and let me show you what to look for if your laptop is doing this exact same thing I want you to, to check your device manager and see if, if you're having um, this issue All right, so let's boot in the windows and, and here's what I want you to check if your computer is doing this I want you to check your device manager and see if you have a USB device that's throwing an error that's an unknown USB descriptor. This is a telltale sign that you're having that, that issue that I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna pull up Notepad and you can see the keyboard's not working. So now I'm gonna pull up Device Manager. And if you look here in Device Manager, you can see that there's an unknown USB descriptor here. So this is actually the USB keyboard um, has a, uh, a chip on here that's trying to communicate in, in, in USB um, and it's erroring out. So it's not able to connect and we can sit here, we can delete this uh, or we can uninstall this and reinstall it. It will never come back. Um, I have seen people uh, be able to uh, get this error to go away by putting their laptop in like high performance mode, which like ups the voltage. And sometimes that will uh, trick the system into making the keyboard show up again. Um, I've also seen people say, oh, you can clean the static out of the, the board by like reseeding stuff and doing CMOS resets. There was a video I did a while back where I just added a resistor under the palm rest on the junction board that pulled the data line low and it fixed it also. But it was kind of a temporary fix. I had that customer uh, tell me that it was still intermittent. It worked most of the time, but it was still intermittent. So Let's shut this down. Let's uh, take a look, and I want to show you exactly the chip that is failing on these, okay? So, and I'll show you again, the keyboard does not work in Windows, okay? I have a USB keyboard, it works just fine. But if I'm just using the keyboard that's on the computer, it's not working, okay? So we'll shut this down and we'll see if we can get this fixed. Okay, let me get this bottom taken off. All right, the bottom is off. I'm going to unplug the battery before we work on anything. And let's get under the microscope so we can take a look. All right, now that we're under the microscope, what I want to look at here is the connector. Let me take this uh, memory stick out of the way. This is the ribbon cable that connects to the junction board that's underneath the battery here. Um, and that junction board has a USB controller chip on there that runs the keyboard, the touchpad, 
and some other devices on there. And so what we can see here is that there's a bunch of data lines here. Some are just uh, communication lines for certain things, but there is a data plus and a data minus that belong to a USB interface, and it's gonna be connected to this choke right here. And so this choke right here is supposed to act as like a filter, and you've seen these chokes on a lot of things. Let me see if I can grab something that has a choke on it. Here you go, this is just a USB cable, and you see this little brick on here? This is a choke. It essentially is just a, a, a circular magnet, and the wire just kind of loops through it, and this helps filter the data lines for this USB. Um, so on motherboards, you'll see a lot of these chokes everywhere anytime there's data lines, because this is gonna be uh, uh, the way a USB uh, signal works is you have a, a data high and a data low, and they're, they alternate going high, low, high, low, high, low. And so this helps uh, filter out any interference. And so this chip, from what I've experienced and the way that I've fixed these in the past, this choke is bad. And all I have to do is just change that choke out and it fixes the issue. And guess what? I have some chokes in stock. So I bought these chokes on Mauser. So this is the Mauser part number to order. And uh, it's just a 90 ohm, 100 megahertz uh, choke. So there you go. So you can write that down. Uh, but let's go ahead and get that changed out. I'm not gonna pull the board out on this one. All I'll do is I'll just protect everything I can. Um, I'm gonna put uh, some uh, Kapton tape over everything. I'm gonna put some uh, heat shielding over things and then we'll uh, just get that chip replaced. And they are super tiny. For context, you can see how tiny they are. And I'll put it in my hand for you. Let's see. All right, we wanna make sure that we're not blowing any hot air on this. I am gonna use a hot air uh, to remove this. You could probably use a soldering iron. It's a little more clunky. Um, I find that do, using a hot air rework station is a lot easier, but we wanna make sure that the hot air is not blowing on this. So we need to turn this around so the air is blowing away from it. There we are. And then we're gonna put some Kapton tape on there. All right, so we'll use this to protect it. And then I'm gonna put this other pad on there, just a heat resistive pad. And then we're just gonna blow the air away from it. And let me put some fresh flux on there. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna be very, very careful this is a small little chip and there's a lot of stuff around it, so we just need to be very careful. It won't take very long to get this thing heated up to, to have it come off. All right, so we have it off. There's no, uh, there's a pin one mark there, but these, don't, these aren't directional, so they can go on either direction. Let me put some fresh solder on here and then we'll, we'll put the new chip on. All right, so let's grab a new one. All right, let me see if I can get lined up. Okay, so that's how we're gonna set it on there. So we'll heat it up and set it down. So we've got the heating up. All right, it's nice and melted, so it's set there. Nice, okay. Let's add some flux and then we'll reflow it and make sure everything is seated right. All right, there you go. All right, so we have the new choke installed. Let's clean this area up and then we can uh, boot it back up and chest and see if we actually fix the issue. You know, it took me a long time and a lot of, of these laptops coming in before I figured out what the actual issue was. Uh, I kept coming up with workarounds, but whenever I finally figured out that this choke was the culprit, um, it made it a lot easier. All right, so we have it back together. I'm just gonna plug this in and we can boot back to Windows. 
plug in the battery and we'll boot her back up. All right, let's boot back to Windows and see if we can test this keyboard. The keyboard did work, just work outside of Windows. Um, so now we're gonna boot to Windows and see if it works. Um, we'll also check the device manager and see if we still have that unknown descriptor. All right, we are in Windows, let's see. And the keyboard is working. Let's open a notepad. And look at that. We resolved the, the keyboard issue. So it was just that choke. And again, so it's a this keyboard's acting as a USB uh, device because it has to be able to interface with the computer in a way where you can control the color of all the keys. Now, if this was just a regular keyboard, you would never have this issue. But it's only these high-end gaming laptops that are having this issue. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at Device Manager. And you can see that we no longer have that uh, device that is airing out. We actually have all of our devices in there. So this laptop's all fixed. I can get it back to my customer. And uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. Um, and thanks for watching. I saved another laptop.